now we will come to the last part of this course. Now we are in a situation to compare the AC and DC transmission. Comparison of AC and DC transmission. Now, whenever we get into comparison, there are there is one aspect that is very important that is cost. The other one is performance. So, comparison can be broadly based on cost and uh, the technical performance. Let us look at first cost or economics. Okay. Now, if I take the cost, cost will first of all include investment cost and the operational cost. So, the investment cost is the initial cost uh, that you need to set up the uh, equipment. Operational cost is once the equipment is there and it is in operation, what is the cost incurred? So, let us look at uh, the component investment cost. So, investment cost is incurred on what? Suppose I take AC or DC, AC transmission line or DC transmission line. What I mean, what are the different components on which I have to spend or I have to invest? Yeah. Now, before that, when you when I am talking about AC or DC transmission, let us assume that it is overhead transmission line. Okay. So, if there is overhead transmission line, the <coughs> land below the line cannot be used for any other purpose. Okay? I mean, one has to buy the right of way. So, first of all, it, there is a land required for laying the uh, transmission line. So, cost of right of way. Okay. Then, then what? Yeah, before that, before coming to conductor and insulator, I mean, when I say overhead transmission line, they have to be suspended from tower, transmission tower. Okay. Then conductors, then of course, insulators, because the conductor is not just connected to the, I mean, it is not hanging from the tower, it is, there is an insulator. It is of course hanging from the tower, but there is an insulator between the conductor and the tower. Insulators. Then, then what? Yeah. Now, there are so many things at the two ends. So, these things are only for the transmission line. At the two ends, uh, there may be many other equipment. So, we will call that as terminal equipment. Terminal equipment. So, if I look at uh, the other components, I mean components other than terminal equipment, they are same, I mean right of way is there for both AC and DC transmission line, transmission tower, conductor, insulators are required for both AC and DC transmission line. But terminal equipment are different for AC and DC, okay. So, for AC transmission line, What are the possible terminal equipment? Possible. What are the possible terminal equipment? If I take say, if I take AC network, there are many transmission lines. Okay. I take one particular transmission line, I can, I could have used DC for that. Okay, instead of AC, I could have used DC. Suppose it is AC, what is the terminal equipment? What are the possible terminal equipment? If it is DC, we will come to what are the terminal. See, transformer is usually an equipment that is required if I want to connect generator to the network or load to the network. See, if I take one transmission network consisting of many transmission lines at the same voltage level, there is no voltage transformation anywhere. See, we need transformers for many purposes. One example is, if I want to connect a generator to the transmission network, I need a, invariably a transformer. Now, I am not considering that part here. 
what i am trying to say is in a network ac network take one particular transmission line okay so it is not necessary that i i mean i will have a transformer uh, in any transmission line take arbitrarily any transmission line. At, at both ends i will not have a transformer it's not necessary okay so and if i want to connect load also i will not use uh, the uh, uh, load at uh, such a high level a high voltage level so i use a step down transformer okay now what i am trying to say is take any network at the same voltage level take one particular transmission line okay so now if i take the transmission line what are the possible terminal equipment so if you take a long transmission line very a long transmission line say a 300 km line what is there at the two ends yeah there is circuit breaker fine yes circuit breaker is one thing what else yes circuit breaker is correct yes what else now what i will do is i am trying to compare ac and dc even if you have dc there will be a circuit breaker so common things i will remove see if i have a dc line i need a transformer and then a converter now before the transformer there is a circuit breaker okay now i'll try to just list items which are unique to ac and unique to dc so if i take a long i am giving a hint if i take a very long transmission line invariably we need something at the two ends huh yeah. yeah inductive reactors inductive reactors that is because under light load conditions it will cause over voltage if you don't have that okay so there are reactors now uh, reactor means inductive reactor in power system terminology we use the word reactor to mean inductive reactor in circuit theory of course reactor can be inductive reactor or capacitive reactor okay. then what else oh, sorry Ah, why do we need reactants? Yeah, uh, see, this, this is normally taught in a very uh, basic course. If I have a transmission line, there is a shunt capacitance. Okay. Now, if I take long lines, there is an effect called what? Ferranti effect. Are you have you heard of that? So, this Ferranti effect is coming to picture when there is no load. So, when there is no load, the voltage can shoot to a large value. beyond the value for which the line is designed the insulators are designed now it's not only for no load it can cause problems even under light load so to minimize that over voltage we nullify or at least to some extent uh, uh, take care of the effect of capacitance by putting a, an inductor so the inductor uh, will nullify the effect of capacitor at least to some extent that's all so that's the point now this problem becomes uh, um Hmm. Uh, actually very significant when i have long lines longer the line more is the capacitance more is the ferranti effect okay yeah any other terminal equipment possible terminal equipment now you use reactor for avoiding over voltage at the same time when there is heavy load there can be under voltage so what one can do is one can put capacitor nee no, see the point is at some point i may connect reactor at some point i may remove reactor and put capacitor okay if you put both then it's there is no use one is having a effect of uh, nullifying the other so i don't want to load both so at one time i can use <laughs> reactor for uh, other times i can use capacitor okay now these are the two major terminal equipment now let us come to dc for dc <coughs> transmission line what are the possible terminal equipment yeah what are the terminal equipment see i i take one possible ac transmission line in a network i want to replace it by dc i remove ac and replace it by dc so what all terminal equipment come there converter comes converter then ha huh? no before that say converter means uh, uh, suppose i say 12 pulse converter okay it includes transformer also but to stress that there are transformers also uh, i will explicitly state transformers okay 
So in addition to the power electronic circuit converter, we have transformers also. Then filters. So as I said, <coughs> filters are of course invariably used on the AC side. They are also used on the DC side along with smoothing reactor. Uh, so I call all these things as filters. Then just now we discussed about reactive power sources. Reactive power sources. So, the, now we have seen what is the investment cost due to. Okay. So, I just said terminal equipment uh, which is there for both AC and DC and we have listed what are the different possible uh, components of the terminal equipment. These are all uh, towards the investment cost. Of course, when it comes to operational cost, I mean, what is the uh, operational cost? What is operational cost? Huh? Losses, mainly losses. Okay. So, operational cost is losses. Where are the losses? In the conductor due to flow of current and any other, any other loss? Uh, loss due to current in the conductor. and corona and of course one can also say the loss in the converter and other equipment so we can in include of course loss in the other equipment together so they are very small compared to the loss in the uh, transmission line one the major loss is the current loss due to the current flow i squared r loss the other loss is the corona loss due to uh, that is dependent on the environment of course. Okay. Now, if I want to compare the two, so that is our purpose now. If I want to compare these two DC transmission line and AC transmission line. <coughs> so, suppose I say that there is a fixed distance whether it is DC or AC for a given distance and for a given power to be transmitted. Now, if I look at the investment cost, so for the time being, I will just uh, look at the investment cost. So, if I look at the investment cost, there are two categories. One is uh, right of way transmission tower conductor insulator, the other one is terminal equipment. So, if I take uh, the cost of right of way transmission tower. conductors and insulators. I will consider terminal equipment later, oh, not inductor, insulators. Now, which one has less, lo uh, less cost, DC or AC? Huh? DC. Now, right of way it is dependent on the number of conductors okay so uh, though we have not get into we don't get into the details of the design i mean one can try to see that uh, the right of way depends on the number of wires that you need and uh, i mean uh, the less the number of wires less uh, i mean we need less uh, investment on the tower from which the wires are suspended and of course conductor materials is also less and less conductive means less insulators. So, DC is less expensive. So, okay, let me write it as uh, this is less for DC than that for DC, AC. <coughs> now, when it comes to cost of terminal equipment, Now, without even getting into the exact values of the cost, we can make a statement about uh, the cost of terminal equipment. Which one? I mean, it appear, which one appears to be expensive? DC is expensive, right? So you need so many things. Okay. So without even 
knowing the values of the cost of different equipment, we can easily say that DC is more expensive here. Okay. So, this is less for AC. So, if I <coughs> plot a, a graph, okay. so I will plot a graph. where <coughs> on the abscissa I have transmission line length. And in the ordinate I have the investment cost. So, I will use uh, say red for DC and say blue for AC. So, I need to plot the curve of investment cost for AC and DC as a function of transmission line length. Now, when I say the transmission line length is 0, if I say transmission line length is 0. Say, if it is actually 0 for in the case of DC if I have back to back. If I have back to back, okay. Now, what is the uh, cost incurred for DC when the transmission line length is 0? It is only on the terminal equipment, only on the terminal equipment. So, I at 0 length, I have something here. I have some non zero value for the investment cost because it is on the terminal equipment. Now, as I increase the transmission line length, then how? does the investment cost vary as a function of transmission line length? Say the other costs, say I have considered already one cost that is the terminal equipment cost. The remaining cost, right of way, towers, conductor, insulator, they are proportional to line length. They are proportional to line length. So, it is actually a straight line with a positive slope. So, it is like this. Now, if I take AC, if I take AC, how does the investment cost vary as a function of transmission line length? So, here also it is, it is dependent on the right of way, conductor, insulator, tower. So, they, I mean, they, all these are all actually proportional to the transmission line length, but the slope is for, for AC, more, slope is more. So, the slope is like this. So, I have now I do not extend it to uh, till the investment cost axis because uh, in the case of DC it makes sense because there is a 0 yes. Slope for DC is oh, oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I made a mistake. Sorry, I made a mistake. <coughs> okay, both are straight line segments. This is okay. Now the point is if, even if I extend this uh, straight line segment till the investment cost axis, the intersection is lower than that for DC because the uh, terminal equipment cost is actually less for AC compared to DC. Is that okay? Now, what, what does this, what do these two curves say? The total investment cost. So, there is one particular value of transmission line length below which AC is less expensive and <coughs> beyond which or if I take any length greater than this, then DC is less expensive. Okay. So, this is called break even distance, break even distance. 
Now this is, uh, I mean, dependent on the system, uh, dependent on the voltage level, power level. So based on all these things, one can actually get a range of break-even distance. It is between mm, 500 and 800 kilometers. This is between 500 and 800 kilometers. Of course, I am talking about only overhead transmission lines for overhead transmission lines. So, in practice, it is somewhere, uh, it is somewhere within this range 500 and 800 kilometers. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, I am, I am, I am, I have drawn this for a general voltage level. What I am saying is, we can arrive, I mean, typically it is between 500 and 800, which is dependent on the voltage level, the power level and so on. Mainly, it is voltage level and power level which decides this break even distance. Voltage level, yeah. See, voltage level is hundreds of uh, kilo volt. See, when you <coughs> come to DC transmission, it is hundreds of kilo volts. Power level is hundred, thousands of megawatt. You are talking about what, your, your question is, what is the voltage level? That is irrespective of this. Yeah, irrespective of this, the, uh, the voltage levels are similar to the voltage level of AC transmission. <coughs> See, uh, this was something which we discussed long back. When I say thyristor valve, why do I say valve? Why not just thyristor? We have to connect, we do not have thyristor for that voltage rating. So, we need to connect many things, many thyristors in series to get the required voltage rating. Okay. So, the voltages are uh, in the range or of the order of hundreds of kilo volt. Okay. So, the break even distance decides whether, I mean, so depending, so distance is given to us. So, if the distance is below break even distance, we go for AC. If it is above that, we go for DC as far as economics is concerned. Now, let us do a comparison uh, based on the performance. So, if I take technical performance, <coughs> now, when it comes to performance, actually uh, DC has many uh, advantages uh, over AC. So, let us look at the advantages, advantages of DC transmission over AC transmission. <coughs> yeah, whenever we talk about DC, invariably there is a converter, there is a power electronic circuit there at the rectifier side and the inverter side. Okay. So, there is some control that is possible in a DC transmission line which is not there in AC. So, in AC, the amount of power flow or for that matter, the amount of current flow is decided by Kirchhoff's law. Okay. There is no, I mean in a conventional system, there is no control. There is a mesh network and the amount of power and the current that flows uh, <coughs> in a wire or in a particular transmission line is decided by Kirchhoff's law, that is all. The user, the utility does not have any control over the amount of power that is flowing in a particular transmission line. Okay. So, the major advantage is uh, there is uh, control over amount of power transmitted. So, this is just a comparison of DC transmission and conventional AC transmission. Okay. Of course, there is possibility of control in AC if uh, we bring in power electronics there, we give a special name for that flex, flexible AC transmission system means use of power electronic circuits for the purpose of control in AC transmission line also. Okay. Now, when it comes to AC system, always the amount of power is uh, restricted by stability. So, you may be familiar with uh, an undergraduate uh, uh, notion of stability where you would have studied SMIB system, single machine infinite bus system. What is the maximum amount of power that can be transmitted? There is a power angle curve which is a sine curve. The theoretical maximum occurs at delta equal to 90 degrees so such things. So, there is a limit. So, that limit is actually the stability limit. It is not the thermal limit. See, thermal limit means the limit which is introduced due to the amount of current uh, that flows in the <coughs> wire. 
so the thermal limit may be much larger thermal limit are usually larger because we designed a uh, wire diameter such that the corona is minimized so for minimizing corona the wire diameter has to be much larger so the, that means the thermal limit is much higher than the stability limit so we can't use the full thermal limit in the case of ac because of stability reasons so there is an advantage in dc power transfer capability is not restricted by stability now again the presence of converter will not only help in power control it will also help in control of the voltage now when it comes to transmission line the voltage is needs to be controlled because there is a sag and a swell if you are familiar with sag and swell under light load conditions we have a swell even if i keep the some of the terminal voltage uh, at the desired value the voltage along the line cannot be controlled all along the line so there will be a swell uh whenever there is light load and there is a sag whenever there is heavy load so such problems are not there in the case of dc because the sag and swell are essentially due to the inductance and capacitance so the inductance and capacitance don't have any effect in dc yes is sag and swell is it has nothing to do with the sag of the wire that is always sagging okay i'm talking about the voltage magnitude if i look at the voltage magnitude yeah that is another sag the sag you are talking about is uh, the wire sag of course that uh, actually when there is lo more loading the sag uh, actually the sagging increases there is no swell there okay so when we talk about sag and swell both we are talking about voltage magnitude yeah that point is also relevant what you are saying the wire sag increases when the load increases because uh, uh, there is more expansion due to more heating and uh, Uh, due to which the sag increases okay so voltage control is actually complicated in ac so again i am talking about the conventional ac transmission without use of any power electronic uh, equipment in the ac system voltage control is complicated in ac <coughs> yeah. then there is one major advantage of dc suppose i have two systems okay i have two <coughs> systems independent systems i want to interconnect for sharing of power then if i have the option of ac and dc i can choose based on uh, uh, various uh, reasons if i use ac then there is one disadvantage a disturbance in one system will propagate to the other system through this ac one to this ac transmission line. on the other hand if dc is used the disturbance propagation is actually minimized to a great extent okay so if two systems are connected by dc dc transmission line so for all practical purposes we can say that disturbance in one system does not propagate to the other system now uh, there is just one more advantage that i want to point out here suppose there is a fault in an ac system i mean we clear the fault by relay will sense the fault and uh, the circuit breakers are given a signal to trip okay now in the case of dc there is a possibility of controlling the converter itself to uh, limit the fault current now such uh, f f i mean facility is not there in ac so fast control 
of uh, I would say fast control uh, can be done to limit fault current. in DC links. Okay. So, these are some of the major advantages of having DC transmission over AC transmission. 